Hello class, today's lesson is on ecology, interactions in the environment. Ecology is the scientific study of interactions between different organisms and their environment. Groups of living things interact within ecosystems. The environment can be organized into five levels. Level one, the biome, is the region with similar climate, types of plants and animals. Ecosystem, the living and non-living things that interact in one environment. Community, the living organisms of an ecosystem. Population, a group of organisms of the same species that live in the same area. Organism, a single living thing made up of one or many cells that is capable of growing and reproducing. So if we were to go backwards from five to one, populations are a group of organisms. Communities are those living organisms in the ecosystem. The ecosystem are all the living and non-living things. The biome includes all of these. So let's look at this picture of an ecosystem. What are the living and non-living things? Or well, the biotic, which are the living, and the abiotic, which are the non-living things. Here we have some animals here. Some are drinking from the water. Some are just standing around. The living or biotic are the animals. The non-living or abiotic is the water. Here's another diagram that is showing different biotic or the living parts and abiotic or the non-living parts. So let's look at the picture. Here, the body or the living parts are your plants, the animals, and the fish. The abiotic or the non-living parts are the water and water vapor, temperature, the soil, and the sunlight. Biotic features are all living things in a biosphere. The biosphere is all the parts of Earth that support life. There are different patterns that exist in populations. The first type are patterns in living space. So animals in a habitat or the living space are located based on food supplies, water, and shelter locations. And some animals live in large groups for safety, such as fish and elephants. Another type of pattern is patterns in time. Population sizes can change with seasons. So if it's warm out, there may be a large number when the temperatures drop. It may be a, a smaller number, a decrease in the number of species. Many organisms migrate to other areas. For example, monarch butterflies and birds. An organism's niche um, includes several things. So first, let's talk about their habitat. Again, the habitat is the actual place an organism lives. 
So your home, your house, wherever you live, that's your habitat. Now the niche, on the other hand, include both the living and non-living parts of an ecosystem that determines an organism's role in that ecosystem. If two species share the same niche, they will have various interactions. So how do species interact with each other? Organisms interact in different ways. Organisms may cooperate, mean work together, compete, meaning they're working against each other, the, uh, the strongest survive, or they may depend on each other for survival. In predator and prey relationships, predators can affect how the prey populations are distributed. So fish in large groups, predators will be drawn to those areas. Prey can affect the location and number in predator populations. So birds feeding on insects migrate to the area where the insects are plentiful. Another way organisms interact is through competition. Competition is the struggle between individuals or different populations for a limited resource. Those resources can be anything from food, water, or shelter. Competition can happen with the same species. So plants will compete for light, space, and nutrients. Competition can also happen between different species. For example, hyenas and vultures compete for the remains of dead animals. Populations change over time. They can increase, decrease. The things that affect it are called limiting factors. Limiting factors are any factor or condition that limits the growth of a population in an ecosystem. Food, water, light, large groups of predators, small groups of prey. Now here's a list of different types of limiting factors. Starvation can affect the population. Disease and parasites. Accidents. Natural factors such as fires or floods. Hunting and predation. So how does an ecosystem maintain its balance? The carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals that an ecosystem can support. So it's kind of like if you're on an elevator and it says up to 300 pounds. So that is the carrying capacity for that elevator. Anything over can be detrimental, just like an ecosystem. So those limiting factors affect the carrying capacity. So if it's overpopulated, the ecosystem will correct itself. Some animals will die from disease or accidents, things like that. So that is your lesson on ecology and the ecosystem. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you fill out your note sheet that's in Google Classroom. It will be titled Ecology.